Adele spared you from reading a very, very long title, but since I am reporting on a paper that bears this title, I felt <coughs> compelled to write the whole long title, as you can see. Wealth and Safety, the Amazing Decline in Deaths from Extreme Weather in an Era of Global Warming from 1900 to 2010. So we're talking 111 years worth of time. No, I'm not the author, unfortunately. The author is Inder Kuklani, PhD, who has been very active in the climate science, but not so much on the true scientific side, but more on the policy and economic side of this very, very large branch of studies. So he has been working with the IPCC originally at the very beginning, you know, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, which is a branch of the United Nations. Uh, but lately, he's been a little more critical of the work that has been performed uh, in venues such as, such as Paris. What are we talking about here? What is it that in the Buklani and his, his fellow, his, uh, another co-author in this paper, uh, did? Well, the idea is man-made global warming, or as they call it AGW, anthropogenic global warming, it's a long, long name, which is only three letter long in the end if you know how to use it. AGW effectively could be, a lot of people say it is, but it is not really a given for sure, linked to CO2, that is carbon dioxide emissions, and the emissions of carbon dioxide would raise the global temperature. That has been the thesis used by a lot of people. And what we'll, be, what we'll be discussing here is the fact that according to some, let's just say, wide agreement, this increase in CO2 also bears with them increased frequencies and magnitudes of extreme weather events. And guys, you've seen this all over the media. You've seen this across, well, you know, TV, newspapers, but Hollywood, they jumped on it, you know, the day after tomorrow, the big, you know, Manhattan <coughs> under, you know, meters of water and all that. There is a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt into all of this, which is great for the media because it helps them sell the product. But let's take a different, more scientific approach to this, and let's go and study a few things to understand what has been measured in this research, and why the numbers paint quite a different, uh, I should say, picture to the whole point. Now, two parameters, I think, were quite important, and I believe they're very, very uh, uh, correctly being selected. Global mortality in absolute numbers, meaning how many people died due to specific extreme weather events, but let's not forget that within this 111 years time frame, population, worldwide population quadrupled. So of course, more people would have been exposed to such extreme weather events. So you must not only take that number, but rather also take a look at the mortality rates. So in proportion to the population on a specific time frame. That's how it's being run. And the extreme weather events, again, for the under 11 year period. Now, as I said, the results are quite different. And I do not, unfortunately, have too, too much time to go into a, a, a lot of detail. But let me just start, first and foremost, very important in a scientific work, what is the source of this data, or are the sources of this data? Well, there is a database which has been run for a number of years, which is called MDAT. It's been run by the university, the UCL, in Brussels. And that university keeps all of this information available, even going back in time, because the reports might be based on old press or reports. As you can see, as you will see in, in the next slide, you know, this is the number, 9,167 events <coughs> throughout the time when the paper was written in 2011. What are the events that are being reported? All sorts of extreme weather, droughts, Extreme temperatures, both extreme uh, hot, hot, extreme uh, heat, and extreme cold. Floods, wet mass movement, as in 
slides, waves, and surges of water. Okay? Wildfires and storms, you know, hurricanes, typhoons, uh, tornadoes, and all that. So a lot of different, uh, you're missing earthquakes because they're not considered to be weather related, obviously. But the point here is any event that has maybe even just a local scale, because there's a big difference between a hurricane, which is very, very large, and a tornado, which is extremely small, extremely tiny in the area where it impacts and inflicts some damage. The data comes from various sources, including UN agencies, which are fairly active in you know, disaster relief very often, NGOs, insurance companies, research institutes, and press agencies, going even back in the past. So uh, uh, quite a large swath of data, but there are some caveats. What are the limits? Well, at least 10 people must have been reported killed, or at least 100 people must have been reported as affected. There is a big difference between killed and affected. Obviously. A state of emergency must have been declared, or there should have been a call for international assistance. These are ORs, so even only one of these would have then the event been listed in this database. So you see that the way this database is constructed is quite important, quite relevant. So let's plot the data, and let's see what happens with this mortality data. And you have tens of years down here. You have the uh, number of events on average. And you see, other than this little meaningless trend, it's really hard to know why these numbers were so low and then all of a sudden they spiked, spiked up. Yes, there was World War I back then, but who really knows? But look at the trend after where the data is a little more consistent and throughout the time we see that there is a clear downward slope in death per year and in death rates per year. So both the absolute number and the rates have been decreasing, counting that again within this time frame, population worldwide quadrupled. So the story is quite different from what you keep hearing. There's disasters, there's deaths, and you know, tornadoes and hurricanes, it's all getting worse. And you know, we have to be extremely cautious about this climate, war, uh, uh, climate change or global warming thing. This shows something very, very different. How come? And by the way, just as a reference, the numbers here, uh, you know, going into the not just the graph, but actual figures, between uh, the, the 1920s, so when we saw the first meaningful reading, all the way down to 2010, the number of uh, deaths declined from almost 500,000 to 35,000, 92.6% decline. Okay? And the rate went from 241.5 to 5.4, a decline of 97.8%. It's a fairly impressive number. What's happening there? We're getting better at something, obviously. But let's break this down, because what we saw was the global value. Let's talk about droughts, you know, the dreaded droughts, droughts in California and all that. Well, take a look at the later numbers about deaths due to droughts. Zero. There's no people dying because of droughts these days. There used to be, it used to be actually one of the you know, worst type of extreme weather that was killing the most people. These days, droughts are not to no deaths, lucky. We'll see to get to, we'll get to why this happens in a little, in a little second. Floods, same story here. Floods are bad, but they don't kill people. They probably destroy a lot of property, but they don't kill people. And property, well, there's insurance, you can rebuild it. You might need to move if, I don't know, something is gaining, I don't know, the sea is getting higher and higher. Or maybe in the Netherlands, they know how to deal with heights in sea levels, and they've been doing this for you know, hundreds of years. Um, storms, again, here it's a bit different. There have been a spike, but again, storms could be tornadoes, it could be hurricanes. You remember the damages that Katrina did. Katrina wasn't a particularly terrible hurricane per se. It's just that levees inland around New Orleans fail and that caused a lot of damage and a lot of people that died. So not so much the event per se, but what triggered, what was triggered by the event. So all in all, a trend which is decreasing. So why the decrease? 
Let's take the example of droughts. As I said, they were extremely dangerous and extremely, well, they were killing people. Okay? Now, droughts are less of an issue because we know how to deal with water. We know water management. We know how to use technology in agriculture to improve yields. When we have improved yields, we probably can stash more food in, t in dire <coughs> times, and so we do not really end up hungry because we've done our job better through mechanization, through fertilization. And <coughs> commerce and transportation allow for fast delivery of goods wherever they're needed today. So there is a drought in California. Zero people have died for it. And maybe the price of strawberry has gone up a pound because you know lots of uh, strawberries are, are uh, grown in California. But this is quite good. You know, something is, is doing is doing really well. Both of these factors are extremely related to our abundance of cheap and plentiful fossil fuels. We do use a lot of energy to make sure that we can do commerce and transportation, and we can maintain good control of water. That's why the Dutch actually stopped using windmills to pump water and started to use engines, because they do it much better. So another aspect of this death on you know, the extreme weather is what does it relate to in terms of other ways that people, you know, unfortunately, die for? Um, so let's look at, it, at this globally. How much of extreme weather this is, is caused? Uh, well, look, there's you know, two ranks. Let's check you know, underway. This is probably due to children, unsafe sex, blood pressure, tobacco, alcohol. These are killing way more people than global warming. Also, in terms of total mortality, look at the list of things. And we have 21 and 22 down in the list compared to global warming. So is that global warming really something that we need to be all too scared about, or all too concerned about, or you know, devoting so much energy and so much money to? That is the big question. Because you know, if we take a look at these numbers and we put that 35,700 number of deaths compared to globally all of the other people died, that's related to extreme weather events, which might not necessarily be related to global warming, by well, we're talking 0.07%. It's sad that there's people that died, yes, but 0.07%. Well, let's put this in the right perspective. Okay. Despite the media attention to such events, they are big, you know, they sell media. Well, what happens is better housing and better construction of buildings are greatly responsible for the improvement in case, in case of flood, in case of hurricanes, in, in case of typhoons. Let's check another last graph out here. This is death rates per million. You see the spike again here. You see CO2 emissions and GDP per capita. And guess this was, what, what is this? This is production of cement. So CO2 emissions due to production of cement, they're fairly high. Producing cement is quite intensive in the amount of energy you need. Well, it saves lives because you have sturdier buildings because you can live in places where weather is not a factor. Here, who cares if there is a, an, uh, well, uh, you know, a strong thunderstorm outside or, or even a flood? That is the big change, access to energy. So in summary, there's people that are proposing drastic curbs on greenhouse gases, and they're saying we must cut uh, use of fossil fuels. We must stop global warming because we're emitting too much CO2. Well. You see what the data tells us. There's barely any reflection of that need to curb those emissions. And by the way, it is not the incidence of extreme weather events per se, but the impact of these events to human population that really matters. Anything can be rebuilt, whereby a life which unfortunately goes away cannot. So we must always be you know, very thoughtful of the fact that it's human impact that must not be affected. And human impact also can be affected by stopping to use energy. In countries where there is energy poverty, you have life expectancies that are extremely, extremely So in closing, one must always look at both the positives and negatives in order to have a clearer picture. 
Well, if you only look at the negatives of fossil fuel, for sure you're going to say fossil fuels are really bad. But are they? Because there's so, you know, a lot of good things about them. They have enabled greater wealth and protection of human lives with greater usage. The more you use energy, the better it is. Be doubtful. Don't get yourself cozy into thinking that, oh, it's all doom and gloom. Because if you take a look to data in a bit of a different way, things might be looking very, very different. And be extremely careful of what the media and politicians say, because they do have their own agenda, and they want you to believe something that is useful for them, for sure. Do your own research. That is what we need. Thank you.